welcome to the Global Business Insights Podcast, featuring your hosts, Dr. Charlotte Brabant and Max Kent. Welcome everyone to our podcast, the Global Business Insights Podcast. And today I have the great pleasure of introducing one of my most inspirational mentors of my life to this podcast. He's not only a great leader, a great friend, but my biggest inspiration who has given me all my equipment, how to be a successful business leader. Joe, thank you so much for being oh, here. My for, pleasure, Charlotte. For Good taking seeing time. You. My pleasure. My pleasure. And as always, my partner in crime, Max. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Joe. Great to see you. Hey, Max. Good to meet you, my friend. And you, and you. Very much looking forward to this. Charlotte has told me a lot about you, so I'm looking forward to this. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Joe, how about we just start by you introducing yourself with a quick introduction for a few seconds for our listeners today, yeah. and then we can dig into some of our great questions. Great. You got it. So my name is Joe Agresta. Uh, right now, I am uh, very proud to be at Rutgers University, where I'm an assistant professor and also a director of the uh, master's program of supply chain analytics. And prior to that, I had a, I, a great career at Allied Signal for 20 years and then 20 years at Johnson & Johnson and got to do a lot of things and got to work with a lot of great people. You know, Charlotte talks about mentorships and looking at people and just to to be with some great thought leaders in my life was fantastic. And most importantly, I have four children all grown. I have six <laughs> grandchildren. I'm an older guy, but you know, I still got a lot of left in the, I still got a lot of fire left. So um, that's just a little bit about me, Charlotte. Well, and that fire, it, it trickles down to me on a daily basis. Um, Joe, we met when when we when we both worked together at Johnson yeah. and Johnson. But then shortly after that, you actually diverged your career. And maybe you can explain a little bit to our listeners today what motivated you to move from a successful career at Johnson and Johnson to teaching then at at Rutgers. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, you know, I had a forty year career. I mean, so I was very very fortunate to do a lot of different things. Uh, both at Allied and then at J and J, but you know, so at after forty years, you start to think about, you know, where do I, what do I want to do for the next part of my life? And I think for me, what was always important, even when I was in industry, was how do I give back a bit? Um, I think I know a little something about things, so how can I give back? And actually, what happened was because, like you, Charlotte, I did, a, I chaired a lot of conferences and things, and. I started to, when I retired from J and J, do some training, and one thing led to another. And Rutgers uh, was looking for uh, professionals. They have what they call professors of professional practice. So we have a lot of PhDs, do a lot of research, but they also like to complement that with folks like myself and my peers. And I got a chance to go to Rutgers as a professor. So my training that I was doing when I retired turned into coming to Rutgers. And as you know, Charlotte, Rutgers has a very close relationship with Johnson & Johnson. Very, very close. Um, so I was really fortunate. I didn't expect to be here, but uh, it's been four years and it's been really, really good. Um, it's it's um, exceeded my expectations and uh, I like being there at Rutgers and helping the students. Brilliant. I think it's really inspiring to hear, and it's certainly something I've thought about, is when you're in a business career and you go into sort of management and leadership, you are in a kind of teaching role, coaching role yep. to, to some degree. So it can and probably is a natural next step to go into teaching or lecturing or, or sharing that knowledge and skills with the next generation. But having done that and worked with people myself, not on the same level as you, obviously, but I've noticed there's a big difference between people who've been in business and people who want to be in business. Mm -hmm. What What's your kind of big, biggest differences that you observe between the two, do you think? Um, well, I think with, that, with anything in the university, you got to give students practical experience. You know, we call it experiential learning. I think for me, if it was just Max classroom stuff, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, a lot to share, a lot of stories, uh, some expertise. 
Uh, but if it was just classroom, I don't know that it would be good. So at Rutgers, we have a chance. We do experiential learning. I work with lots of different companies. We have to get the students to get practical experience, to apply what they learn. And we have all different kinds of programs. You know, there's the traditional internship co-op type things. Uh, I run a master's class on Think Like an Executive, where we have executives come in. They challenge our students the next week, the students have to, to respond back. So many vehicles. So for me, it almost feels like I'm back in industry, uh, maybe with a little less of that pressure, uh, you know, the day to day pressure of being in the in the supply chain. But um, I think for me, Max, that's that's what you have to do in education as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you have to teach folks technical stuff. But if you don't give them the practical experience that they can talk about it when they get out, um, you know, you're doing the students a disservice. So for me, that connection really motivate motivates me because I get excited. You know, we're, we're doing big projects for all different type, types of industries. I also will say I'm learning a lot now because I we do projects for different kinds of companies, you know, consumer products, companies, uh, all different types of. So for me, I'm learning, you know, different industries. And, uh, you know, we just did a project on liquid hydrogen replacing diesel uh, with a major corporation. You know, I learned a lot, you know, uh, but at the same time was able to coach the students through their, you know, through their project or what have you. So a long answer for a short question, but I think that's the that's the glue, Max, uh, you know, for me anyway. Absolutely. And that's very much about the, the the whole coaching aspect and the whole mentoring aspect. But I wonder, just because supply chain management is not really a subject that you study at school. No. So how, or there, or let me rephrase, there are many young professionals just might not understand the critical role of, of supply chain and which role it plays in, in business. Yeah. So how do you explain its importance to someone just starting? Their yeah, so just to go back, in my day, the, the words weren't even used, right? Supply chain, they called it materials management, all those kind of things. I think what's happened today, probably a little bit pre-COVID, but certainly during COVID, supply chain became a very topical thing. People didn't, you know, hear the word supply chain. But when I think about it, Charlotte, you know, I look at supply chain as, you know, all of these independent trading partners coming together to satisfy customers, right? So if you explain that and you can talk to students or anyone, say, it's not just within four walls. Supply chain is all of these other entities that you're dealing with, right? And at the end of the day, the customer is at the end and all of those things in between that you put together, that you connect, right? That you build alliances, uh, both internally and externally to really drive the customer. Um, I mean, that's how I explain it. Independent trading partners, you know, driving process and innovation at the end of the day to satisfy customers. And you want to try to paint a picture, right, Charlotte? You want to paint that picture of all of these things coming together. And I think then people can say, yeah, and, and it's not just logistics or it's not just the warehouse or it's not just manufacturing. I can be involved in lots of different things and have an impact during the course of you know, of a career. So, um, and you know, you know this, you guys know this supply chain um, has gone from, you know, okay, let's see how much money we can save to really being an integral part of the strategy of a company, right? How do we look at our network, right? Do, our, do we have a supply base in our network? What is the value stream? What does the value chain look like? Um, how do we drive execution? So it's really become, um, a big value contributor to an enterprise. And I think that gets people tweaked on too, to say, wow, I'm, I can have an impact on the bigger, you know, the bigger strategy of the business that, that I'm in. And today, you know, Charlotte, that, I mean, today at Rutgers, we probably have 1200 students majoring in supply chain. Um, and then we have master's, pro, you know, program that I run and all, but 
Um, but at the same time, to your point, you got to get them to understand what it is and get them excited about the prospects of potentially making an impact. It's really interesting hearing you talk about supply chain in that context because I think it's it's obviously has evolved certainly in my time working oh, yeah. with it. And from, you, you know, speaking about how it was referred to previously as well, it, it obviously has changed. The bits that I get involved in a lot more now is around DSG and ethics and people yep. wanting to know the whole lifetime cycle of that product, where it's come from, how it's been shipped, all of those things. Is that how you see the sort of evolution of supply chain continuing, do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's the it's the whole cycle of the supply chain. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, the things that you talk about, I mean, and it's everything from start with the people in the supply chain and how they contribute and the safety of those people. Right. To the environment that you have them working with, to giving back into the communities um, and all those things. But at the same time, driving execution and bringing I have to say, I think the big change today is you know bringing more and more connected technology into the supply chain, whether it's industry 4.0 or what have you. I think that's really uh, an important element that's accelerating super fast, right? Um, having machines in Belgium talk to the machines in uh, New Jersey, right, and look at uh, you know look at quality and variability or where to put your next order in. So I mean those types of things I think become uh, super important. The other thing I think that's big, bigger than when I started, you know, when I started, you worked hard, you pushed hard. Today, it's a lot about analytics, right? And having people understand data and having people be able to uh, not only be able to, you know, look at the data, be able to tell your story with that data. That is one thing we have to teach people in business, but also in the university. How do you tell your story with data, right? How do you, A, understand what the data is, where it comes from, how you clean it, all this other good stuff? But how do you tell your story with data? Because how you tell your story will drive decisions on where you put your next factory, where you're going, what, where, you know, what kind of suppliers do you, you know, do you want to have? What are those sustainability or regulatory requirements that you have to deal with in, in your products? So I think that becomes that has become more and more, uh, you know, prevalent and a need in the, in the supply chain. Thank you so much for sharing, Joe. But, you know, one unique element is that has always inspired me is your leadership and and your mentorship. So maybe you can teach us a little bit your experience <laughs> with all these young talents out there. In your opinion, what are the key qualities that and now that you look for in the next generation of of business leaders? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think the the future of work is going to be more about the questions you ask than maybe the answers that you have. And I think that you need to encourage people, whether in university or wherever, in in at business, you know. Be, you know, have um, intellectual curiosity, ask those questions. Are you really able to work in teams? I know it's, I know it's, we've been talking about this over and over, but are you really able to work in teams? Can you be a contributor to a high performing work team? And I define high performing work teams of all the standard stuff, you know, you know, aggressive goals, all that good stuff. But there's one thing that differentiates a high performing work team. How do you get people to share what they know with one another? And as a leader, you know, that's kind of what you coach. You try to coach your people on share undeservably one, one another. Charlotte, you did that, right? I mean, you were always, you know, an integral part of our teams, but always sharing. And you had this intellectual curiosity. So you are kind of the, how do I say, you're kind of the, uh, the poster Fun. child of that, right? Yeah, an intellectual curiosity. You're passionate about things. You communicate. I remember when you were doing MRO stuff, you were very data driven, right? Very data driven. And so all of those things um, really come together. You also, you know, and I, I say you, but you're a role model for that. How do the things that I'm doing connect to the bigger picture? 
to where the company wants to go, to how we'll treat customers. I think those are qualities. I think you, you don't necessarily, you're always going to learn the technical stuff. Look, I'm I'm 66 years old. I'm learning from, you know, these graduate students we have in analytics. Oh my gosh, they're so smart, right? And I learn from them, right? Still. So, um those qualities that, you know that that you have, you know that passion, it starts there. You want to see people with passion. I don't think people don't have to have all the same personality and you have to recognize that. Right. You know, like, oh, well, you're not like me. So I don't know that I'm going to coach you because you're not like me. No, some people are they're different. And that's the part that diversity of thought and everything. I, I love that then. I love it now. Um, but you want to impart that on people that you coach um, to let that come out of them. So that, you know, Charlotte, I used to say, be inspired to inspire, right? Get inspired so that you can take some of this stuff and inspire others with it and learn from them. You know, um, that's I know it's a long answer, um, but it's a continuous learning journey. Um, it, it really, really is. And um, it starts with passion um, in the supply chain. Understand process a bit if you want to get a little technical and things. Let's not, you know, it's not all in the in the cloud, so to speak, but understand process and things like that. And that willingness to learn and the willingness to ask questions, I think, is so, so important. You know, I don't think people do that enough. You know, why are we doing something this way? Why does it take X amount of cycle time? Right. Why are we not looking at data? You know, let's ask some questions and then we'll go get some answers to it as a collective, right? As a team. So those are just some of the things that I think about. There's a lot there, right? A lot to I think it, back, that's but, a fantastic answer, yeah. I think, because it's it's it, you you did bring it back to supply chain as well. Go actually let's put this in context because yes, there is the leadership side to this when you're working with people. Um but you do need to have that technical aspect to this of yeah. how this works within your industry. I think if we look at leadership on the whole, I'm just thinking about, you know, times I've had lately with the people I manage and whether it's disconnects or people don't see necessarily yeah. eye to eye. And where you talked about Charlotte and that communication style that she's got and that sharing, that's certainly what has made the difference about you know actually communicating with people getting into the psyche of what they're thinking and then bringing those people together um and i see that as servant leadership i know Absolutely. you've mentioned serv servant leadership certainly charlotte's mentioned it many times before now i've met you i know where she's got it from so <laughs> <laughs> you know and servant leadership is um i mean a you're a good listener you're empathetic being empathetic doesn't mean you have all the answers but you're you're listening or whatever I think the one thing people have to be careful about with servant leadership, let's just say you're the servant leader in a supply chain group. It's not like everybody just runs amok. I mean, you want to empower people to, to drive performance improvement and all that. But at the same time, you need to give them the guidelines that, you know, the, the coaching, the, uh, you know, the education, the ability to fail you know, and learn from the failure if, if that's if that's what it is. Um, and then also sometimes as a servant leader, make that hard decision based on the inputs that you get, you know. So empowerment is important, but then at, there are going to be times as a leader, you're going to have to make that decision on, you know, where are we going to put our next factory or what type of supply do we, do we have to move out of a certain type of supply, you know, base that we have? you know, and things like that, but it's not done in a vacuum. Um, and, you know, so I think that becomes important. I don't know for me to be honest, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not, believe me, I got a lot, lot to learn, a lot to do, but even as a kid, I th always thought it was important, no matter whether you were the best person on the team or the worst person on the team. And I mean, ability wise, right. You, you could make an impact. You could make an impact. And that's how I always felt about people. And I think it just carried on. And maybe some of that comes from my upbringing as well. So I think a lot of that, you know, brings something to, uh, you know, to what you bring as an adult. Um, everybody's got something to give. Uh, you just have to also make sure, though, as a servant leader, that if they do need a course correction, that you're willing to do that as well. Right. So in today's world, we talked about 
you know, being a little bit more analytical, right, or process oriented or whatever. And some folks have to recognize that that's a direction you may have to go and will help you get there. And if you don't, you know, you're go- you could be vulnerable, you know, in your current role. And I think that's also part of a servant leader is, is being that, you know, honest like that um, and support people through that kind of type of situation. And if they don't want to do it, well, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother podcast, Max. So that's, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So much, Max, that we can learn from, from Joe's wisdom Absolutely. experience. And and just building on from that, sure. you mentioned after your 40-year career at Johnson yeah. & Johnson. I can't even say the, the number. It's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. Um, just looking back at your whole, at, at that career journey what's one piece of advice you wish you could give to your younger self um you know if they ask you to do a job do it you know sometimes ego gets in the way right well wait a minute that's not a manager role or that's not a director role or that's not you know if you if they ask you to do your job and i did but looking back on it and advice i would give to others is do it you never know where this stuff leads to you know what i mean uh you never know where this stuff leads to i think um also i think for me being able to communicate at all levels you know um i think that becomes uh I, I needed to do a better job at that from when I was younger. I mean, I always felt you just do your job. Everybody will, you know, recognize you or whatever. I, I think today you need to have the confidence to communicate at all levels. You know, when you grow up and it's always respect your elders, sometimes when you have that respect your elders view, you don't speak up, right? Because I respect my elder. And, you know, I think I could have done a better job, Charlotte, maybe earlier in my career in in being more uh, engaged that way to be able to tell a story. Don't be able to. And and like you, um, try new things, you know, try new things and don't be, you know, don't be afraid. Don't let others paint what you are. You have the brush. You know, I, I can if I can just tell a quick, you know, one of the pivotal parts of my career, I was at Allied Signal. I am not an engineer by education. I was supporting a very complex space program, guidance systems for, you know, rockets. Um, and the program was really faltering, really faltering. Our customers of NASA, Boeing, Lockheed, whatever. And I put my hand up and I said, I want to run that program. Now, I was fortunate because our president, he he gave me a shot. The customers said, we like this guy, but how could you put a non-rocket scientist running a space program with manufacturing and engineering? And, you know, it could have scared the hell out of me, you know, as far as I'm going to run away because the customers. But you know what? I think I had what they needed, right, to bring the team together. I love dealing with complexity as far as different functions. So, you know, don't be afraid to try those things and not just for my own growth, but I felt like I could make an impact on the business. You know, I didn't just do it for me. I felt like, you know what, this program is really not doing too good. I think I can help it. So it was for me, but it was for the enterprise as well. So don't be afraid to try new things. Don't let your ego get in the way. Do not let your ego get in the way of taking assignments that you might not think are the best. It's amazing what you can turn things into. Anything they give you, you can turn it into something and have an impact. So that's the way I feel. It's 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 inspiring stuff, isn't it? I mean, I I think I'll probably take this podcast and play it to my team, to be honest, and say, look, (laughs) this is what Joe said. I've told you as well. But um, the, 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 you generally get those challenges. I think where you talk about a 40 year career, there's obviously been some highlights, but you must have had challenges. I can't believe that's all been played and sailing all the way through. Some things can certainly my career knock me back and you have that 
Yeah. Oh, glad you. Passion to get through. I mean, it, I've written how do you stay motivated on the questions we wanted to ask you, but I think motivation will only take you so far. It's there's something more than that, isn't there? What what is that 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 keeps you going? Yeah, I you know I mean I think um, you know for me I always tell my ch- my kids who are now grown and in their careers and everything and families, um, I tell them I lost more jobs than I got. You know, and you know there were some of them that I should have thought I got should have gotten right, and um, and I think that you know you have to get through that process very quickly. You know, you're a little ticked off, you're a little this, but you have to really work through that rapidly. And then, you know, self-reflect. I think leadership, you know, is about self-reflection. You know, uh, I really, really do. Every day you should be self-reflecting. And I, and I think so for me, what helped me, Max, you know, whether it was a conscious thing or just part of my nature, let me self-reflect on why didn't that happen and what can I do better? Um, you know, things, things like that. Uh, people being, having people motivated me. I loved interacting with people, not, you know, just to solve problems and things like that. So kind of a self-motivated person, but I can tell you that there were times when I got bumped around, you know, I got bumped around, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, you just have to self-reflect and 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 take it to the next level. And I was very lucky in my career. There are probably about three three individuals uh, who have were just thought leaders, and they were tough, but they were amazing thought leaders who empowered me. And you know, uh, Vic Chance from Johnson and Johnson, and Fred McClintock from Allied Signal, and. And some uh, Courtney Billington from Johnson and Johnson. These guys were, they were just real role models for me. And and I tried to take a little bit of them into me. That helped as well. Not everything, because we're all our individuals. But you can look at some leaders and say, you know what? I like that piece. I like that piece. I didn't like that piece. And kind of mold yourself. I think that helped me a lot as well max you know to be honest with you because you're going to get bumped around in 40 years you get bumped around you know some things are out of your control and or you take the heat for it and uh you know how do you face it and then move on right so i love this i'm taking it personally as well thank you it's it's really good (laughs) advice i hope everyone else benefits from this as well i'm sure they will i mean it touched my heart i resonate with your answer so much yeah, no, I mean, look, Charlotte, I mean, you, you know, and you're Charlotte, you're always, uh, how do I say, you got to be in the game to play the game, right? And I think you have to have that kind of attitude. And even things are, are, you know, are tough. I mean, in my new role at Rutgers running a master's program, I never would have dreamed of that, right? Um, there's so many great, bright students, great professors there at the school. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Right. Uh, But you get engaged with it. Um, Try to grow the program. Be innovative. Look up to others. I've had some nice mentors at Rutgers, you know, and I think that kind of keeps you keeps you going. Even at this stage of my career. My second career, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. Whatever it is. (laughs) Definitely continuous learning and just don't be afraid to fail. What's the worst that can happen? Exactly. But exactly. And believe me, I've failed. But you bounce back. I mean, it's it's cliche ish. But if you don't self reflect, you never bounce back. You you just don't. And, And I agree with you also with this element of don't let your ego go in. No, exactly. You know, especially in that younger generation of of talents, they approach me via LinkedIn. I get hundreds of messages. Mm -hmm. I want to become a manager. I want to be, I want to create impact. But in order to become a manager in order to create impact there are certain boxes you just need to yeah. in school you need to get through and even my career i started in the automotive production yes that's right three shifts yes yes I, that's so beautiful you know even this excel number crunching no it, it does not happen miraculously someone has to do it exactly or even or even back then i when i worked at porsche 
you know, all these POs that I then had to fold and put in the envelope and print out the addresses. Yes. Someone's yeah. got to do it. And that's why I was never, I, I, I never let my ego go in. Yeah, I, just, I think it's, I think it's, it's a great, and you got great examples, Charlotte, because in your own personal development, you were on a manufacturing floor in an automotive industry, which is, and not a lot of women on the manufacturing floor in the automotive industry, right? Absolutely. You had to, you know, and to, to bake. So, yeah, that's right. You know, I even I had to stand on this little stool <laughs> in order to 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 make to to do the work. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, like, so I mean, all of those cool. things. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's it's important because it in you lot you see a lot of students and a lot of people want to work for the big companies. You know, I want to work for Honeywell or J and J or Merck, and I say, oh my gosh! But you know, there's so many like startup companies that are so exciting, or these mid tier companies that are supporting the big companies. Oh, this is a place where you can really connect and make an impact. And you know, I mean, obviously, you're all attracted to you know, you know, the nice you know companies that people know about globally and all. But there's so much infrastructure in the supply chain in the value chain that supports the motherships you know uh, yeah I've, I was there so i've never subscribed to the view of, of working for big companies uh, for me it's been about learning and that's uh, exactly. you're absolutely right there it's kind of, you can learn well but just as much in a startup or a business that's where you're that's working good. with the founder and he thinks he's the greatest Absolutely. salesperson in the world there's, there's so many examples isn't that you can learn from it, it really is and, and we've been you know a lot of the projects we now recruit for our experiential learning are from startups right and so that we can and i actually i like working with the startup owner if you will yeah. Uh, talk to them about what they really, really need. Try to match talent with that. And the students get, you know, just a great experience. You got to have an entrepreneurial mindset as well. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're in a big company, I guess the phrase used to be entrepreneurial, right? But you've got to have that. you got to have that mindset in everything that you do. Um, so I think, you know, that becomes super important. And Charlotte, you did those things. I remember that. I remember, uh, when you were on the team and you know you were crunching a lot of numbers right and you always wanted to communicate those numbers to me right and all of those types of things and try to connect the numbers to what you thought we should do right which becomes important so it wasn't yeah. you it wasn't just number crunching it was like i'm going to crunch the numbers i'm going to try to create some insights and i think i'm going to propose what we should do, who we should work with, and all of those other things. And Always. you kind of took it all this you kind of took it all the steps. And that was important. And then of course for you, you were always a team player as well. So that was always part of the equation. You weren't sitting in a corner crunching, you know, you were sharing. And I think those things become super important in, you know, in people at every stage of your career, whether it's mine or somebody starting out early. I think that's key. I mean, it, it helps with decision making and it helps at the end yeah. with storytelling. Um, Joe, and, and I remember me taking up new roles, even roles where I had no idea yes. what I was going to do. The piece of advice you kept on giving me is be the sponge, be a sponge. Yes, that's, and that's right. the piece that's of right. advice that uh, that I give to my team, you know, when you get new Wonderful. projects, when when you are on your team, be that sponge. Yes, so absolutely. And it's really and true. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I have a picture on my desk here of my grandfather and I, and he's the one who told me that be a sponge. He was an entrepreneur. He was a had his business and had factories and all this good stuff for a successful guy. Um, but he used to tell me be a sponge. And I guess I just stuck with me, Charlotte. So you keep telling you. your people that we'll just keep it going down to generations. Right. <laughs> that's how we Absolutely. do it and joe and, and also your famous quote what you are famous for be inspired to inspire maybe uh, you could share how how that quote came up maybe there's also a story i don't know it's a, it really was more of an observation than anything else because like i i told you that i i saw people that you know had an influence on me in uh in my career or in my life whatever and you got inspired 
from them. And I think for me, it created an energy inside of me to say, okay, now, now I feel like I'm more equipped, right? Um, you built the muscle, you, um, you know, type of thing. And, and so now it's time to, to give back some of that, right? So it was like a, you know, it's like the supply chain. Now it's a circular supply chain. Well, with people, it's a circular thing, right? And I would look at people um, who really, I would say, inspired me. And I'd say, you know what? I'm going to go out and try to put a little bit of that on the teams. And that's yeah. really how it, and I'm sure other people have coined the phrase too, Charlotte. I don't know, but I just, it was more about how I felt you know, and then to put the words with how I, how I felt, but I think you always have to give that, give that back. Uh, but it's look not to others. It's not a quote I've heard before, actually. And I really love it. It's, it makes total sense because it's again, back to that passion piece. Um, if you're not in, if you are inspired when we're inspired as people, we change, don't we, we become passionate. So it's that yeah. inspiration that probably drives that passion. That's when we become, we change and we become more, enthusiastic about our subject we warm to yeah. our subject. no it's very true so think about today right so you all ins charlotte inspires me right i'm just saying right i mean charlotte <laughs> and, you know and she and she has her challenges and all this good stuff take those challenges aside right inspires me and so i could either on this podcast check the box or be inspired so i'm inspired <laughs> so maybe i can inspire somebody who listens to this thing uh in the future absolutely absolutely and and that actually is the best way to end this podcast be inspired <laughs> to inspire there you go the best finishing words there you go. so thank you so much my pleasure for your time today I no, will forever great. treasure this moment. That was that great. Was I really, I really moment. enjoy talking to you both and keep up the good work with the podcast that you guys put on. And it, it's really, it's really great. Keep it up because, uh, hey. you know, people are, people are learning and that's, that's really great. So I want to, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, no, thank you so much. It's fantastic speaking to you. It's just been, it's been inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, um, Char I mean, with Char obviously, Charlotte's been talking about this one in particular for a long time. So I know it's taken us a while to get this together, but I'm just really pleased we've we've done this, and I just hope everyone does benefit from it as much as so as much as I have. So great. Thank, you. thank you. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Charlotte, God bless. Max, God bless. Do good. God bless. All right. Get ready for that big conference you're chairing in a couple of weeks. All right. You got it. All right, guys. Be good. Be good. See you later. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Take care. Be good. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Man. Do good. Bye. Be good. Bye.